how does the face space look if A has complex eigenvalues. In that case, we first use a change of variables in order to get y prime equals c times y. Because in this new basis, it is much easier to sketch the phase space. And once we have found the phase space for y, we can revert to the original variables to find the phase space for x. So here we have x prime equals a times x, where a is now equal to some p times c times p inverse, where c is a scanning rotation matrix, and p contains the real part of v and minus the imaginary part of v, and where the lambda equals a plus bi. So we imagine we can do all these computations, so we have already found lambda, we have already found v, which means that we have already found c and p. So how are we going to draw then the phase space? We use a familiar trick. We write x prime equals a, with a equals p c p inverse times x. Then we multiply left with p inverse, so we get a p inverse times x prime equals p inverse times p is identity, so what is left on the right is c times p inverse times x. Then, as usual, we define y equals p inverse times x. So then here we get a y prime, and here we get a c times y. So our new problem is then y prime equals c times y. Now we can write down the solution. y of t equals e to the power c t times y over 0. And we know how to compute uh, e to the power c t because it's a scaling rotation matrix. So e to the power c t equals e to the power a t times this uh, rotation matrix in terms of b and time times the initial value, uh, initial value in terms of y. So how then does the phase space look in, a, in an explicit example? So say we have this a over here. Uh, say we have already found a lambda minus 1 plus i. So the other one is lambda equals minus 1 minus i. But we will use this one with the corresponding factor v. How can we then draw the phase space? Well, our solution looks like e to the power a t times a rotation matrix. So what's going to happen? e to the power a t is uh, in this case e to the power uh, minus t because a equals minus 1 is going to pull everything towards the origin because if t, t, t grows e to the power minus t becomes smaller then this matrix over here is going to rotate in this case the b equals 1 so our cosine, cosine b t is positive so we're going to rotate counterclockwise So we're doing two things. We are rotating counterclockwise in the y space, and we are going towards the origin. So suppose we start somewhere over here, then the phase space looks like this, rotating uh, counterclockwise uh, towards the origin. So that is in the y variables. So what happens then in the original x variables? Well, we are still uh, rotating towards the origin, but now we have to be a bit careful. Are we going clockwise or counterclockwise? So what happened in the uh, y case, we went from the positive uh, y1 axis to the positive y2 axis, because we were rotating uh, counterclockwise. Now we sketch our uh, factors v. Our factors v are the, the uh, factors in the p matrix. So p contains the real part of v, so minus 1, 2, and minus the imaginary part of v, so 1, 0 in this case. So we sketch v1 and v2, and now we are rotating from the positive v1 axis to the positive v2 axis. So in this case, that would mean we start somewhere at the positive v1 axis, and we rotate towards the positive v2 axis, so in this direction. So in this, in this case, we will rotate in the original variables clockwise. Again, going in, so we are again spiraling uh, inward, uh, but only in this case, now we rotate uh, clockwise. So the clockwise and counterclockwise is a bit the tricky part. So you can use, of course, the P matrix to figure out uh, which way you go. Another way is to, to drag just any point, like I took in this case x equals 1, 1. And say, suppose we are in the point 1, 1. Where are we going? Are we going? Uh, towards, uh, are we going down? That would correspond to uh, rotating 
uh, clockwise or are we going up? So you compute, if x equals 1, 1, you can compute x prime at that point. So x prime equals a times x, so you can compute a times 1, 1. Here you have your matrix A, that gives you the factor 1 minus 4. So if you are at 1, 1, you are going in the direction 1 minus 4. So you are going in this direction. So that means in the x variables, if you are in 1, 1, you see from this picture that you are indeed rotating clockwise. So that is a second way to figure out whether you are going clockwise or counterclockwise.